we always wanted to do like a very immersive experience. And in that sense, music was very important to capture the emotions, to capture the mood. Well, I've known Juan Antonio for many years and how I approach my work, I know that's how he approaches his work. Almost all of our conversations are about how would you feel if you were this person? How would you put yourself in their shoes? The way I like to work is I like to work in order of the story. I want to be at the beginning so that whatever I'm writing musically evolves naturally with the characters. Seeing the first light of day after the crash and looking around you. What you're not thinking is just overwrought sadness. You're thinking, where am I? Like, you might as well be on Mars. He was using interesting techniques, like hitting the chords of the piano. You know, it makes the mountain feel almost like a, an alien planet. You have to feel those things that the character might be feeling. And it's about getting that feeling out and onto the keyboard. There is a moment that the story needs energy and he suddenly bring all this kind of Uruguayan music, candombe. Bringing in some of the indigenous instruments, this percussive heartbeat felt right. Even the choir was singing um, this, this language from the Andes area called Mapuche. The words we chose were all about Mother Earth, how it's going to protect you. Even though it seems like this is the thing that's going to destroy you, you can't escape the fact that it did happen. There are actual people that went through this. You feel a responsibility. <laughs> It's been great to have Michael bringing all his wisdom. He's not just a great musician, he's a great storyteller. <laughs> I wanted to be a part of giving this voice to the people who no longer had a voice. And for me, the music was the emotional voice of the people who did not get to come down off that mountain. Luis? Oh, yeah.